Good afternoon YouTube, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I thought I would give you guys our carnivorous plant update. I think we're long overdue for one, so um, I brought down a few plants from up above my head. We're just going to do a, a highland tour today of carnivorous plants. Nothing in the warm side. It's a really horrible stormy day and I honestly I don't even have the warm side open to the cool side. So there's it's much much warmer on that side of the bubble wrap than it is on this side of that door. But um, yeah, let's just kind of get started here and we'll see how everything goes. This plant I'm kind of excited about. That is my wavy Maxima. And I'm really looking forward to um, to this plant when it's big. Nice, really light pictures. They're like a yellowy almost. They show up a bit greener on camera. There's a bit of red starting in them. But um, it's kind of like this reversal, and the, the pictures are, are light and sort of greeny yellow, and the leaves are starting to get ripples, but they're really, really red. Even in low light, they're really, really red. So what else do we have over here? Um, that's kind of cool. My Pitopangii. I had to remove all the moss from a lot of my plants. That's why the moss looks like crap. I'll explain it in a sec. Uh, my Pitopangii here is getting some basil shoots coming out of the the soil. I can just just make out um, the tips of the, some new growth now even though some pictures made their way out way early. These pictures were appearing before the, I could even see the growth so I knew it was coming. A nice Aristo Loquides there. Um, this is Alba, a lower. This is Red Hairy Hematocross Aristo. This is just my seed growing um, Pentaculata. There is um, a red one here with sort of darker pictures and then a light one and the pictures are all like they were all like buried in the moss so they none of them look very good but um, there's a green one and a red one. Yeah so the moss I took basically my Lias Vagnum was growing out of control in all of this stuff over here and so I took it out. It was just like I was burying my losing my seedlings in the moss and I didn't think it was getting a lot of airflow down to like this kind of part of the plant down sort of at the base of the plant where I want lots of airflow I don't I wasn't thinking I was getting much so it was making me a little bit nervous and it was always wet sort of in here and I wanted just better airflow on these things because the moss was like way up to like here I was completely like losing half the plant and and so yeah I just like ripped it out one afternoon and yeah it kind of looks like crap now but whatever um nice diet is back here see that one sort of little um, jam band way at the back he's like just starting and it's coming out of like a woody growth right here like it's coming out of the main stem so that's kind of cool if we take you up we can probably see some Pitopangii uppers there's another one on that vine right there it's kind of a jungle up there it's really neat um, so yeah, I got some uppers and some lowers right now, so that's kind of cool. What else? This is my seed growing Edwardsiana. Looks stunning. Um, absolutely love it. I brought down my AW Edwardsiana, and it, it's like a totally different plant than this seed growing one here. Behind it is um, Eddie Cross Hamada. The heat this summer did in a lot of pictures, like on my Argentii there. It's just starting to picture again. It's so slow grower, but you can see it's just like just getting some pictures back. Um, next summer, I plan on putting about 10% darker shade cloth on and keeping the greenhouse. It was it was 50% shade cloth, so I'm gonna maybe it's 40% shade cloth. But anyways, I'm gonna go up to like 10% stronger, so it's just more in the shade, and um, maybe two or three degrees Celsius cooler. So I'm going to try to keep it like under 30 and as opposed to just over 30 next summer. This summer was just like hard on some plants. I also did a lot of repotting this summer which didn't help. There's a little seed grown Herliana. This is my Undulatifolia cross Hamada. It is fairly new, hasn't put out any of its own new pictures yet. So this is just like an old picture. But um, nice size, kind of cool. I like my Hamada hybrids. So a couple Rajas back there. Little tiny guys. I repotted all my cephalotus this year, so they um, are taking some time to come back. I will get to those in just a second. Check it out, Brad's greenhouse coffee mug. 
These guys are brand new like this week. My two Colossies. BE 3775 and BE 3776. So they're um, they're both classes of medium plants. I was hoping to have a little bit bigger pictures on them, but overall they came in really healthy anyways. So not going to do any live moss in them as I explained, you know, a few minutes ago. I just don't want the moss growing up and beyond them. So I'll just save the live moss for bigger plants. But even the bigger plants where I first started, you know, they're getting buried too. Anyways, I brought some of these guys down from the rafters. This is Rob Cantilei Hamada. Very nice. Um, yeah, it's, it's doing really well. I love it. I'm really impressed with it. But I'm impressed with this guy a little bit more. This is the opposite. It is Hamada Rob Cantilei as opposed to Rob Cantilei Hamada. Pictures are definitely different. You can tell the um, the female plant is Hamada as opposed to on this one here. So I don't know if we can compare them in the same shot really. And the peristome is a little bit wavier, a little bit like more out of control as opposed to like this one's very uniform and um, and that. This, this guy here seems to be like kind of up here, it's all wavy and a little bit bigger. So it's doing very well um, and it's a fairly new plant for me. Here's my AW Edwardsiana. I noticed I must have um, pushed it on the side. That dark little spot was there. So it's not nearly as um, toothy as I'd hoped. It hated this summer. Again, it was hanging. It was not under lights or anything. It was just hanging up um, under the shade cloth near the roof. And it got quite a lot of like red blotches. So it's loving the cooler weather right now. Um, we're kind of getting into that part of the year. Well, we're in that part of the year where there's not enough light anymore really. We're down to like eight and a half hours light here. Nine hours light max. And as soon as I go below 10 hours light, my plants start to suffer a bit. But coming into this fall, all my Nepenthes just started doing so well when there was like around 10, 12 hours of light. Burbidgei here, I also brought down from above my head. It's looking nice. I just repotted it um, last month, so it's recovering. Some miscellaneous stuff down here. Kind of more miscellaneous. This is um, Petalota Hamada. I like it. It's um, I think going to be pretty cool. And yeah, this one here is Spatulata Hamada. And yeah, some moss. Some fly traps that I got in. Some Mizume. This guy's that's his regular spot. He's just down here. I find this guy needs like total shade. He hates summertime so much. Um, yeah, the fly traps I just got in, so all the bigger ones went outside. And the little guys here, I was just trying to establish before I put them outside. Um, getting them this time of year is kind of tough because you throw them right into dormancy or do you um, let them grow for a, a whole year without going dormant. So. Not sure exactly where I'm going to go with that yet, if I'm going to put them out. I might put them out like late winter so they get like a bit of dormancy, a bit of a cool down and then like boom right back into spring sort of thing. So they're not like dormant for months and months. My helium foras are all down on the bottom. I moved them down here last summer because again at the end of summer all of a sudden I realized that like whoa these things are like not happy in the heat. So they weren't very far away. They were just right there, but um, difference from this wall to this wall is A, it's about two feet higher, so it means it's a little bit warmer, but it was getting direct sun. The um, the noonday sun would come from behind me and like shoot right in there, and they would get it. And it was it, it still had shade cloth on, but the sun was heating them up, I think, and they were just like too warm there. And then it, at the end of the day, the sun would come from a slightly different angle like this and miss the shade cloth and get them. And didn't notice anything really at first and didn't notice anything in other years. But like I say, the greenhouse was a bit warmer this year. So, um, yeah, they're all recovering down here. They're all very happy that it is um, that it is fall. You can see, like, new growth coming out of everything. So there's a parva, very hairy and um what else did i get to that's just kind of cool here hmm everything is like everything is kind of cool oh, that guy's neat here what's that one 
My Yunsin area. Kind of neat pictures on it. Can't get the tag back in now. But yeah, I, th I think I came. Oops, put you back in focus. I think I came really close to losing a few from heat stress. And um, the other thing that happens naturally when there's so much heat, you try to shade them from the heat, right? And then um, you it, they don't get enough light. So yeah, so now they're under lights. They're down as cool as they can be. They get no direct sunlight in the summertime when it's blazing in on them. And I think they're much happier. I keep them sort of slid. So yeah, they're a little bit blotchy because um, cause the old leaves that weren't used to the light went kind of blotchy. And then the new leaves, all the new growth is coming out pretty awesome, actually. There's lots of like really awesome new growth coming in out of them. So quite happy there. What else? <clears throat> nice Deania picture. Um, some Niagara back there. Here are my Lamiae. Still kicking around. Um, again, I'm like keeping the moss back from these guys. Monticola. I think he's doing okay. More Lamiae. Yeah, Cephalotus. Cephalotus, same deal as my um, Helios. Except for I was growing them lowland and they got like ripping hot this year. So I also let them seed two years in a row, which I think really took a toll on them this year. Didn't the first year, but. So at the end of the summer, I repotted them all. The roots were all good, but their pitchers were kind of crappy. So I repotted them all. And they're coming back nicely now. They always like stop for a few months after I repot them. And I just basically put them back here in like total um, shade for the summer and just got the light going above them um, come fall. And yeah, so none of them are like spectacular colors or anything right now, but they're happy and they're growing quite well again. So that's the main thing. A few hamadas over here. All of these are just um, for irrigation to make sure they stay nice and watered. Doing quite well. Lots of basil shoots coming up, so that's nice. But these guys are all due for repotting this, this year, so I'm not looking forward to that. But what can you do? A few of my bigger Heliophoras. Neblinae is there. Ionazani, Cross Heterodoxa. Saracenoides. Tatii is back here. Right there and yeah a few others but that's sort of what's going on with um, my nepenthes and my cephalotus in my heliumphora my butterworts they're all mexican butterworts i they were like in their their pots forever this fall i um, redid all these guys and put them into two trays and tried to take a bunch of pullings half of it was because they just kind of fell apart because you know how it is they were like so they were sitting on top of their own leaves like three inches above any kind of media so they were just kind of like growing with like no media at all just sort of hovering in the air it was kind of weird but i see lots of flowers and stuff like that um when the sun does come out these guys get a little bit of sun through that wall still but um not a ton there's you know i can't wait till um till the days start getting longer again but um what are you gonna do so right now they're just sort of in their dormant rest anyways. It's a cooler period for them. Um, I watered them yesterday for the first time since I put them in there. Um, so it's been like a month or so since I watered them. And I won't water them again for another month. Let them get fairly dry. Even though I'm taking some, some cuttings there, some pullings, that won't hurt them that much. And yeah, that is really about it for, um, for stuff. They don't have much in the way of sundews in here. There's an Alice sundew. I'm not sure how it even got there. My Drosera Adelaide is over here. Doing fairly well, I guess. There is some um, Utricularias, Lympholia. Nothing's in bloom, unfortunately, for my Utrix. Oh, no, here's a Sandersonii in bloom. 
so yeah there's a little um these guys the flowers are beautiful but i was always under the impression that um the plant itself would be bigger there'd be more to it there's just basically nothing there i think some of that stuff actually popped up over here yeah it did look at this forgot it was here that is a Molulensis cross Lowii, and it got some Sandersonii in it. That looks pretty awesome, actually. It's all like growing towards the light, doing much better than my actual batch of um, Sandersonii down behind me. That's funny. But yeah, that's going to be it for this tour. I hope you like this video, and if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel.